Alrighty, I think I'm live. Um, hello, my name is Matthew Krupsek. I'm a computer scientist from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, this is a status update for uh, some open source software I've been developing called Open Athena um, for version uh, 0 0.1.29 pre alpha. Um, so, Open Athena is a piece of software that allows professional and consumer drones to spot precise locations for, through their images. Um, so what that means, basically, um, if you have like a DJI or Skydio or whatever kind of drone, uh, normal consumer drones, normally if you're flying them around looking at the ground and taking pictures, these pictures store metadata of where the drone is and the direction it's looking, um, but it has no way of really understanding where that location is on the ground. Um, with Open Athena, I've developed a novel technique which allows a line, a ray, to be cast out from the drone's position towards terrain, um, all virtually in math, and then it uses a digital elevation model of the terrain to determine where that line intersects with the ground, and then provides that location as a precise um, latitude, longitude, or NATO military grid reference. Um, so this software has a ton of commercial applications, including uh, search and rescue, there's been some interest, uh, wildfire detection and management, uh, civic surveying, and that kind of stuff as well. Um, but also a very important, very novel use of this is in military applications. Um, traditionally indirect fire, where you have a, like artillery or mortar or something like that, um, that is firing at targets beyond line of sight, indirect. Normally, you have to have somebody on the ground as a forward artillery observer. Um, now, as we're seeing in, commonly in warfare today, people are already using these consumer drones for forward artillery observation. Um, so the goal of this project is to make that process more precise, um, less error prone, and um, to reduce the uh, type of artillery that's needed, maybe from like shells to just simple mortars which are less destructive um, and also allow it to be uh, less error prone for that target acquisition process um, and so this is a picture taken by a dji drone of a public park um, this is one of the classic exa examples i use for the operation of the software um, so we can see that in the center of the image um, is a park with like a green shed and uh, if we run Open Athena on that drone image, we get a pretty precise spot on the ground. Um, and this this is pretty nice. This is just doing the basic raycast out from the camera's position towards terrain until it finds an intersect. Um, and normally it's it's pretty darn accurate. Um, now there are some situations where the target result can be very inaccurate. Um, chief among them is if the magnetometer, uh, the compass on a drone is uncalibrated. Uh, so this is something drones will normally ask the user to do before flight. They'll ask them to like spin it around or make like a infinity symbol or something um, so that the drone can figure out which way it's pointing um, relative to the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, but unfortunately, um, this process is very annoying to do um, and it isn't forced upon the user before they fly. Um, so this is something to be aware of with this technique with Open Athena, um, is that it takes the magnetometer reading from the drone images verbatim. It has no way of telling whether or not it's accurate or not. Um, and so if it is not accurate, it can result in incorrect target results. So it'll think that it's pointing like at five degrees north when it's really pointing at like 10 degrees and so it'll be a, um, a bit off. Um, so this is mitigated by calibrating the magnetometer before every flight. Um, it's annoying and it's a pain to do but there's really no other way to get accurate data uh, from these drone metadata images. Um, yeah, so this this picture here is an example of a incorrect target resolution when the magnetometer was uncalibrated and um, the flight control software for DJI was warning the user to perform a calibration. Something to be aware of when using this technique. Um, other times, uh, terrain resolutions are usually pretty good. 
um, in a variety of situations, different places on the planet, different drone makes and models, etc. Um, so it, it really is a powerful technique um, with a lot of applications. So new to version 0.1.29 pre-alpha um, is Find Me mode. This is an alternative targeting mode to the um, uh, parse image mode seen here. So this mode is interesting. It actually provides targets as a relative bearing range and change in elevation from a fixed position. Um, and something else that's kind of neat about this mode is that it can continuously watch a directory on the user's computer for new images as they are added. And it acts as a stack, a priority stack, where as new images are being added, um, after the user hits space to move to the next image, it'll pop the newest image first. And it will keep repeating that process of popping the newest image first and displaying it to the user until no more images remain. Um, and so that is pretty ideal. One of the thoughts for this targeting mode is that it may be ideal for uh, small caliber uh, man portable mortars, um, which are often used in combat. Um, they're usually pretty accurate. It's just like you have a base plate and a, a tube that you drop a shell in. Um, the shell has some propellant and a tail on the back of it, and it shoots out of the tube when it hits the firing pin on the bottom and goes over uh, terrain or other objects, making it an indirect fire platform, um, and it will land downrange. Um, so the thought is by providing relative distance, direction, and range um, for this targeting mode, it can allow the use of mortars instead of artillery. Mortars are much, much less destructive than very large artillery shells. Um, and having that process be more precise and less error prone can potentially um, prevent a lot of wanton destruction that is normally employed in this type of role. Um, so this is output from Find Me mode. This is an example of what will show up after the system has finished processing all the images in the directory specified. Um, so first off, we have the target. It will display the file name um, of the image that was used for target calculation. Uh, it will display the date time tag of the uh, image, its EXIF metadata, and that's normally in local time um, for whoever took the picture. Um, and then NATO MGRS, so this is a military grid reference system. Uh, it's a coordinate system similar to like UTM, um, if you've ever heard of that. Uh, but basically it provides a one meter square area on the globe using a four or five digit uh, grid zone designator to start, and then um, a 10 digit grid ref that specifies a one meter area inside of that grid zone. And then of course, uh, this coordinate system does not include altitude data. Uh, so we provide it just next to it. For those who care, this is in WGS 84, the standard um, ellipsoidal projection for uh, position. And so then following um, is a the detail on the relative position of the target compared to the specified fixed location. Um, so it provide it can either provide an absolute bearing, or if you give it a magnetic offset, it can give you a magnetic bearing. So the difference between a magnetic bearing and an absolute bearing, um, in most of the globe, true north is not actually where a compass points to, like a magnetic compass. Um, the magnetic field is slightly off from where tr true north is, and it shifts a little bit each year. Um, so if you have like a modern smartphone or a drone or that kind of thing, um, they're pretty good about being able to figure out where true north actually is based on some data that people have done for mapping like what the offset is for certain locations. Um, so here in Atlanta, Georgia, the offset is about like 5.43 degrees uh, right now. Um, and so if you provide that as a uh, declination value to this software, it'll adjust the target bearings um, in the opposite direction, which I'll explain more later, 
um, but it allows you to use a handheld compass instead of a like smartphone compass. So you can have relative uh, coordinates for targets available as a magnetic heading instead of a true heading. Uh, range is just the great circle distance between um, the person and the target at the person or the fixed location's uh, altitude. Um, and then elevation is the difference between the altitude of the fixed location and the target. Um, and so after this data, we have um, some user input. The user can press the arrow keys, spacebar, backspacer O, uh, while the program is running, and it will instantly update the results. Um, so the arrow keys are able to adjust the um, uh, north position and the east position by increments of four meters. Um, and what this allows an operator to do um, is they can watch like fall of shot or where rounds are landing. Um, and then they can hit the arrow keys to adjust a little bit and see if they can compensate for like windage or other factors like that. And then the hope is that when they go to prosecute the next target, um, that north and east adjusts, those little minor adjustments will carry over and allow the first fall of shot to be more accurate the next time. Um, of course, this is not solely limited to military use. Uh, providing these coordinates in relative terms uh, may also be useful for like search and rescue or civic surveying, that kind of stuff. Uh, but these options are available for somebody who's using this in that role. Uh, again, I should mention this software is in pre-alpha. Um, it is not stable, and um, any result from this software should be double-checked before use. Um, so yeah, windage, you can use the arrow keys to adjust or hit the enter key to reset the adjustment. Um, spacebar, so as soon as you're done with the current target and you press spacebar, the software will scan the entire directory that you've specified and it will find the image with the absolute latest date time tag, so the newest image available. And it will bring that up and display that first before other images that may have already been there when the user started the software. Um, the reason thinking for this is that it's more helpful to have the absolute newest targets first uh, because things have a tendency to move around and you don't want to be acting on old data. Um, and then again, that is why this software displays the date time tag. Um, it's ultimately up to the software operator to look at the date time tag and determine if they're acting on old data or not. Um, and so another feature of this software, uh, I say fixed location, which is used to provide a bearing range and elevation for each target as a relative target. Um, but it is possible to change that fixed location, that frame of reference. Uh, and this can be done pretty simply by hitting the backspace key on the keyboard. So when the backspace key is pressed, the user is prompted for um, a NATO military grid ref or a latitude longitude of their new location. Uh, once that is entered in, the software will prompt the user for their current altitude. Um, it is highly recommended that the user inputs their altitude using a GPS um, or similar thing, um, because that tends to be the most accurate. But if they're on the ground and they're um, they're not like on the roof of some tall building or something a couple stories up, uh, their altitude will be pretty similar to the terrain altitude. So they can just hit enter again without putting in um, any number. And the software will look at the terrain digital elevation model to determine the user's current altitude at their position. Um, what else? Uh, the O key, or whatever looks like an O on whatever kind of keyboard the, op the software operator has, it, um, it allows O or like the Cyrillic O or, or any of those keys, uh, will view a copy of the current image. So it's not the exact image itself, it's a copy that Python has made. Um, but it is visually identical to the original image just without any of the metadata. And so you can look visually at the image to see uh, what the target resolution um, was made on. So yeah, with all that being said, I think I should give a live demo of the new find me mode. 
Um, and then another big change that I should mention for this new version is that it finally runs on Windows. Uh, now it isn't exactly point and click um, usable by like normal everyday people. This is still intended mainly for developers and tinkerers. Um, at some point in the future, I would like to make a graphical user interface available, um, but this, this may take some time. Uh, but for now, the software, this is the first version that can actually run on Windows and be used normally without any kind of weird formatting errors or other issues like that. So, so yeah, let's show Find Me Mode. So to start, we have to be in the Open Athena source directory, SRC, um, and then we can just run the Python interpreter on findmemode.py. So for arguments, we have to give it our digital elevation model, um, which is very easy to obtain um, just through a simple command line program. And this is something that will probably be made available as a graphical interface later. Um, but you just tell it the westernmost longitude bound, the southernmost latitude bound, the easternmost longitude bound, and the northernmost latitude bound. So like a bounding rectangle. Um, and it the software will download uh, the terrain elevation for that era, area. Um, and it is a pretty efficient form of compression. It's uh, similar to like TIFF images. Um, so it is lossless and it's like a tiny amount of space on the um, user's computer, like only a couple of kilobytes or megabytes at most. Um, but it is able to store pretty precise elevation da data for a large area. And so this can be downloaded offline and brought with the user into whatever kind of situation they're operating the software in. So it doesn't have to be connected to the internet during operation. Um, but so anyways, for find me mode, uh, we provide it that digital elevation model, that .tif file that has to end in .tif. Um, and then we can give it our latitude, longitude, um, the magnetic declination if we choose. This is option is um, optional. And then usually we do want to give it our current altitude um, like that. But if we don't, it will display a warning and then it will use the terrain value for the altitude for the fixed location. So it'll look at this point, 33.83, blah, 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 and longitude negative 84 point, blah, blah, blah. And it will find the terrain altitude in that location and use that for the fixed location for the frame of reference. And then we can give it a directory that we want to search in. So if we had like our images on a different drive or a different whatever, um, Find me mode is perfectly capable of uh, dealing with that. And if no option is provided here, it will just use the current directory. So the warning is displayed to the user about magnetic declination. And then it will do its calculations and then it will prepare um, some data and present to the user the tar latest available target, the most recent. Um, and so then we see it's pretty far off from the fixed location I specified, just in terms of it's, it's far away, uh, but it is in the same geographic area, so it's covered by the same digital elevation model. Um, but so for demonstration purposes, we can see pretty clearly it provides us good data on the direction distance and change in elevation of each target. Um, we can use the windage option to adjust the location in four meter increments, which is about the same as the length of one um, standard car, like a passenger car. And then we see as well as we adjust, it will slightly adjust the NATO military grid ref, and it will adjust the range and direction um, something that it does not adjust, and this is intentional, is it does not adjust the elevation. Um, the elevation is the same. It's kept the same as it was when it first pulled the terrain data. Um, and this is very intentional. The reason for this is that this adjustment 
is really only intended for like windage or other factors like that. Um, it's not intended to actually change the location that's being targeted. Um, so what that means is that even if you, you, you really only want to use it for like minor adjustments um, to adjust fall of shot. Um, and this will compensate for windage. And so as you're adjusting, it will not change the terrain elevation uh, of what is being targeted. Um, and so then, of course, we can hit enter to reset the windage adjustment. Um, we can press O to open a copy of the image. And um, we can press backspace to change the reference location. But let's actually use this target resolution as our new location. Uh, you should never do this during the normal operation of the software, but uh, I digress. So we give it the NATO military grid ref, and we give it our altitude, and it will um, recompute everything. And this can be done um, while the software is running, which is nice if you ever need to change your location uh, quickly. Um, and so then when we're done prosecuting a target, we can hit the space bar to switch to the newest available target. Uh, this can be done even while images are being added in real time to the directory being scanned. So it will perform a scan after you hit space bar and then it will bring up the newest image. Um, so if you have like a shared or mounted directory where drone images are coming in in real time, um, this will let you see the, the newest one as they are coming in. Um, and then again, it provides the target in relative terms to our fixed location as a direction, range, and change in elevation. And we can keep hitting spacebar, keep using the software until no more images remain. And then um, if there are no errors, the software will cleanly exit. Um, so that's what's new in version 0.1.29 pre-alpha. Um, some other changes. Uh, so some other changes for the SK-42 Gauss-Kruger values. Um, a small bug was fixed for values where the last five digits were less than 10,000, and it would emit a leading zero. Now it properly formats, and it has a leading zero for if there are any values there. Um, what else? Parse image.py. There used to be a formatting bug on Windows machines where... Um, it would make the military grid ref here unreadable. Um, that's now fixed on Windows, and as well as the Find Me mode um, works on Windows as well. Uh, it works exactly the same. Um, of course, Windows can't really render these emojis, so they'll just show up as like question marks or whatever. Um, but that's perfectly fine. The software is still usable. So like these will show up as question marks. Um, yeah, and so version 0 0.1.29 is kind of a minor release, um, but I haven't done a video showing Find Me Mode um, and some of the changes like that to the software. Um, yeah, I, I think that about covers all of that. And then I should reiterate again, um, if you're trying to use this software in this kind of situation, it's very important to calibrate the magnetometer of the drone or aircraft f before flight. Um, having a calibrated, accurate um, heading is very important for this technique. Um, so yeah, uh, again, I'm Matthew Krupsack. This is the Open Athena project available at openathena.com. Um, I am accepting pull requests and contributions to the software um, if you are interested. I've also intentionally made it very easy to add your own make or model of drone uh, to be compatible with this software. All it takes is a little bit of adjustment in parseimage.py, um, and this software is ready to run for any kind of image, any kind of drone you can give it, as long as it has the appropriate metadata. 
Um, yeah, so that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.